to the Scientix2 webinar series. My name is Leotinzi and I'm a member of the Scientix team at the European Schoolnet. Uh, with me today, my colleague uh, Adina Nister. You can see her in the list with the Scientix account. And Adina will provide us with technical support and she will manage the chat messages. Our presenter for this session are Yelena Milosavljevic, a math teacher in primary school, and Milena Mladinovic, a teacher and also a Scientix deputy ambassador for Serbia. And they will talk about this card, a rectangular coordinate system. Before you start, I would like to ask you please to turn off your microphones and camera during the talk in case they are on. Um, the presentation will last about 40 minutes, and after that, we will dedicate about 20 minutes to questions and suggestions and comments from the participants. In case you encounter any technical problem during the presentation, please write to Adina, the scientist account, in the chat, and she will support you through it. You can find the chat tab on the right side of the screen. You can also use the chat if you like to share comments or suggestions with the other participants and to post questions for the final session. To share with everybody, please select the option everyone in the recipient menu. And now uh, I would like to leave the floor to Milena and Yelena. Uh, welcome and thank you for being here with us today. Hello, everybody, Hello. everyone. Hello. Uh, well, uh, we were already introduced, so this is Yelena. My name is Yelena. I will be the spokesman for today's webinar. Uh, Yelena is here like um, a teacher who were organizing and realizing the classes and uh, the teacher with the idea of this uh, thematic approach uh, of teaching, I mean, thematic classes. So. Uh, with this idea, we started, I mean, she started mostly, but we started together because uh, the inspiration came from uh, some of the workshops that were from a project. A uh, project was started because uh, our Ministry of Education um, realized that finally we need to change the national curriculum. and. Uh, uh, in front of the that idea of changing national curriculum, they organized through the project some workshops or seminars, education for teachers in, I think, 50 schools in Serbia. And uh, one of the seminar was about uh, thematic approach uh, to teaching. So afterwards, Yelena decided to, um, to plan uh, three classes with a thematic approach um, in seventh grade with uh, our school system that's uh, children of 13 years old. Uh, it says here on the slide it's an experimental lesson. It, it was not an experimental lesson. Uh, there is no translation. I didn't find the translation in English, but it's a lesson that teachers can look up, for, you know, on uh, to, to teach uh, from the, their colleagues about something like uh, thematic approach or using some web tools uh, in a classroom. So it was more like that, that kind of class. Uh, of course, what we learned from the workshop, yeah, I, I forgot to mention something. Uh, I was on those classes in two, uh, three of them, and I was, I had, um, I was a part of it like a technical sport. So I had a chance to see them all and to um, evaluate them and uh, um, maybe sometimes give some opinion about some technical things or some methodical things. So pretty much that's why I'm here to present it. Yelena is here to help me do it <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, and to, to, to now I'll return to the, and to the story about the planning and uh, how we came with everything and realization. Um, uh, yeah, the plan was to teach Descartes' rectangle coordinates system 
cross-curricularly using various lab tools. Uh, of course, uh, we done this before I became a scientific deputy ambassador. So afterwards, we were talking about so many, so many possibilities, more possibilities in uh, using web tools for um, putting the children in a, um, interactive, more interactive environment. Uh, so this year, she will also, well, we will also uh, do those classes, but we will try to find better ways and maybe even uh, appro more appropriate tools to to do what we uh, attempted to do in the first place. So I will just go to the next slide now. Yeah. In the planning process, uh, Yellen realized that the best uh, subjects to do it as a thematic in a team uh, cross curricularly is geography, uh, computer science, and of course math. And, uh, we decided to put a difficulties that we stumble upon uh, in the second slide because we wanted to point out some things that are really bothering, well, not bothering us <laughs> in that process, but it was something that we would like to see being changed in the future in our schools. So most of the planning was left to Yelena when she was planning classes, even when she was planning classes in geography and the computer science. Uh, she, of course, had uh, those teachers uh, for the support for some kind of, um, uh, they were giving her suggestions how to do, uh, in, in which lessons she can, uh, she, which lessons she can use, for example, in geography and computer science to realize these, uh, the goals that she had. But um, the teachers were mostly skeptical about thematic class because lack of experience. Uh, thematic class is not something that we heard or talked about the first time when we were on those seminars. It's something that in Serbia is um, present for, I guess, at least six years. Uh, but not, not very often teachers uh, have... Um, hmm, uh, not very often teachers decide to, to use this kind of approach. So it's very, very um, unused, I guess, in our school system, if I can say it like that. Uh, many teachers do not have computer skills developed and knowledge to fulfill these kind of tasks. So that's why I was mostly present on those three classes. And we of course, it would be great if we could do something about it because then I guess most of the teachers would use web, web tools for uh, uh, filling their goals on the lessons and classes and use it, use more interaction between, uh, uh, between pupils. Uh, collaboration, collaborating with colleagues was based on introducing ideas and posting possibilities. This was something that I already said. Uh, and yeah, it was a little bit hard, you know, because um, instead of preparing one class, one lesson, you know, for the kids, Yana had to prepare almost three classes and not even in her uh, domain of uh, expertise. But she really did a good job on it, I must say. And let's go to the classes. Sorry. Yeah, uh, the thematic uh, was sick me find. She called it sick me find me because it was very appropriate, and you will see why when uh, we introduce the classes. First thematic class was from geography. It was a uh, fortification class. They already learned about uh, the subject. Uh, I mean, the, the theme, but uh, it was something uh, to widen up their uh, knowledge about it. The second mathematics class was computer science, science, and the third was mathematics. And yeah, geography. This is just a list of what they 
learned on that class. Uh, I will not read it now. You can read it. You can see it on slides. I will show you better to show you our presentation, Yelena's presentation, I must say. Uh, but we will do it very quickly because there is like more than 10 slides there. But it's easier to present it to that slide than to just put it on uh, on this uh, on this slide. So just to go a little bit further, yeah, I will get back to this slide. This is the the PowerPoint that Yelena used. Of course, three thematic classes. The first was geography, and uh, there was a little bit of discussion. There was a little bit of uh, finding out about themselves some things. So they have little tasks, and they could. We decided to let them on this class use the mobile phones because uh, most of them have a mobile phone. No, the they are connected to the network in the school uh, wireless connection. And uh, we tried to use as much as possible of that at that point. So part of the uh, the tests and part of the information Yelna gave them to a PowerPoint. The other part, they had to find themselves on the internet and uh, or in some other way. But uh, I forgot one thing to say. Before we started with this class the day before, we uh, asked from children to uh, download one, um, uh, well, it's an Android app application, and it's called Map Coordinates. So we also use that one on classes because we were yeah, teaching and learning about uh, long longitude, latitude, and how to find coordinates and locations uh, using the coordinates uh, with uh, maps and with uh, some applications to have maps and can easily give us uh, what we need, you know, when we are searching for a location. So we tried to uh, translate this PowerPoint to English. I, I'm not sure if it's perfect, but I, I'm sure you will understand what it says. And uh, here is a, this is a task. You can see here on this slide the task. Why the internal, uh, internal meridian is named Greenwich. And of course, afterwards there goes the answer, but the first we give them a chance to, to Try to find them out, to find out. So besides the, the just the facts about how to calculate or find some locations, we were trying to give some historical also backup and background on on um, some elements that they were learning on this class. Of course, some interesting things as well, like uh, where is it? Uh, where the green is passing through, which countries, and some interesting information about a zone. Then, of course, uh, uh, yeah, the, 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 yeah, there is a materialized line of Greenwich shown also here, and of course. We afterwards went to latitude, and uh, of course there is another test here about the equator and how it gets named. And uh, this one was very interesting for the kids, of course, uh, how one minute, you know, and one uh, second are um, presented in uh, kilometers. Uh, how distant, uh, what distance they are presenting in a real, uh, in a, in a reality. So yeah, a little bit more for longitude and latitude. To the pictures mostly, and at the end of the class, we uh, Yelena used, uh, of course, uh, Google Earth, 
because it's the most realistic program to use at this point to show um, not only the our planet, but how uh, how it is uh, divided by latitude uh, and longitude uh, lines. So it was very fun, a little, little bit playing with it. Uh, it very clearly shows where Greenwich goes and the crater, what's on which side of the um, uh, half of the Earth planet. So for kids, that was very interesting for them. The, the problem was that uh, we didn't have a possibility to give them a chance to work a little bit to the Google uh, Google Earth because in the classroom there weren't um, computers for the children. Only only we had uh, presenter computers, yeah, laptop and um, projector. So I guess it would be more fun even for kids or uh, us, of course, if we could, um, you know, um, uh, have this class in um, in a classroom where there are more computers, computers for kids. And at the end, there was a map uh, for kids where they had a task to do. It was like a final task and to show what the, they've learned and about the skills, how to find them on maps. So they had to, on this map, to bold the Greenwich and Equator and afterwards to, I don't know if it, you can see it's too small, but uh, yeah, there is like tasks uh, showing the the coordinates, and they should find those cities on the map just using the coordinates on the on the uh, in the tasks. So maybe you cannot see it now clearly, but uh, Yelna and I decided just before this webinar that we will put it online all the material that we have, powerpoints, and some uh, worksheets. And at the end of the, this presentation, I will write it down in a chat room, so you can expect it by the end of the week. We will just sort it out, everything, translate it, because we didn't translate everything, every worksheet, and put it on the web so for people who want to use it, they can download it by the end of the week. We'll be, uh, could download it by the end of the week uh, on the address that we will write in the chat later. Okay, that's about uh, geography class. As I said, uh, uh, pupils were using mobile phones to find information, so of course, as, as well as to find uh, map coordinates with the uh, app that they downloaded before the class. Uh, they were using, we were using Google Earth. Uh, with the discussion with them and some questions they had, it was easier to show them to Google Earth how it works. Um, question of the participant of the webinar, yeah. Uh, there is, we would like to ask you now something, and that is that if you have an idea after this presentation of the class, how to... Um, to put more interactive tools in this kind of class, and if you were working with some tools that could be used in, uh, for example, this class, uh, maybe it's a good idea to share it with uh, us, with uh, other participants in this uh, webinar. You can write it in the chat room if you can, if you have some suggestions. I mean, it would be for us, it would be very uh, useful because we are planning to do these classes one more time, and I guess. Uh, exchanging the experience and knowledge about this would make these kind of classes much better and product more, much more productive. So let's go further. Computer science, that was the most interesting probably class for the kids because they were in front of the computers and they were uh, always uh, trying to find something on it and the test that you will see at the end was very interesting for them. They were playing <laughs> pretty much with it. But yeah, we were learning about Google Maps. Uh, unfortunately, uh, they didn't have, uh, they didn't work in Google Maps uh, with the 
their teacher uh, before, with the teacher of science, computer science before. So we did it, I will show you now that PowerPoint, yeah. Uh, we did it from the scratch. So we made first introduction and then afterwards what to use to go to Google Maps, although most of them knew how to, to, to go to the Google, Google Maps. Not everybody, not every people knew how to use it. So we went with a very, very formal instructions where to uh, type, how to type, how to zoom out, to zoom in, how to look out for the uh, location, for the cities, places. Uh, and uh, how to yeah, zoom out, zoom in, or get the satellite view. We were having, uh, this is like a task for them to find our school in the satellite view. So <laughs> you can see from the satellite view here on this picture, uh, school that Yelena and I work in. And yeah, a, lot, a little bit more about Google Maps, some points, very important points, how to use it, how to use the coordinates, how to get them into the map so they can be, uh, it's not the same as they use it in a geography class. They, uh, so we had to give them some more instructions how to, uh, how to get an input in Google Maps and get the right reaction from it. Okay, then of course we connected it with the uh, Georgia of the lessons. Uh, we, uh, uh, with a little bit of uh, talk about what we do on a Georgia of the lesson and uh, how is it uh, different, you know, Georgia of the lesson from the Google Maps specifically. So now we did some like um, we tried. It's, it's it was like a test for kids to try to find some cities because the the main test, the final task was uh, to find. Uh, you will see. Let Let's just go on by the time. I I just want to tell you so much things, and I'm trying not to forget anything because there was so many things to, to do and to mention. And that's why I sometimes hurry up before the slides. So they were finding first Paris, and then they were trying to find Toronto, uh, Canada, Canada um, by using the coordinates, typing the coordinates in uh, Google Maps and explaining, of course, to them that, as you see, uh, 42 uh, three degrees and 66 minutes north uh, should be just written down as a positive uh, as a positive number, and uh, 79 uh, uh, minutes and 42 uh, uh, I mean uh, seconds and 42 minutes west should be written down as a negative um, coordinate with a minus in front. So that was very important for us for, to explain to them and to to know that they are uh, figuring out that uh, kind of asking. Um, yeah, this is the task. They had a table with the contents in which they had some coordinates, and those coordinates were written down with uh, showing north, east, so longitude and latitude. Uh, they had, their test was to uh, write them down in Google Maps, but really to look out uh, for the positive and negative uh, uh, markings, uh, considering, of course, uh, which part of the, uh, which uh, point of the earth it's written down. And then they uh, have to write down in the column uh, cities, uh, the name of the cities. The first letter of the cities would give them the, the hidden city. And there is some more information about that hidden city in the, in the task itself. 
but uh, they, they will have to, <clears throat> the test is done when they have the name of the hidden city at the end. The second task was to use their uh, birth date uh, for the coordinates and to try to find them using the coordinates, uh, that those coordinates to try to find uh, where the locations that are uh, on those coordinates. Uh, not only that, but we are, Yelena did some combinatorics with it. She, she tried to ask from them to do uh, combinations of their uh, birth dates so they can see uh, how many um, cities they can find just using their birth dates. And afterwards, uh, she, she made a little bit of a party atmosphere asking them to find one solution of, from the variety they had and to see, to decide where they can, for example, or want to, to make their birthday party in which part of the country, on the, on, in which city uh, of the cities they gain from the, those um, combinations they did with their, with their birthdays. Yeah, so that was about the computer science. Uh, yeah, of course, we did the this class only with uh, Google Maps. I guess there is, there is much more interesting uh, web tools that we could use to, um, to you know, teach or to learn about um, about a Descartes system. In this case, not Descartes system, but uh, about a coordinate system uh, in the maps. But uh, I guess it was we thought that it was, it was more user friendly and that it will be very easy for kids to to use them. I mean that application. But again, if you have any suggest su suggestions in, for this kind of class, how to improve it, or which web tool we can use it in the future to, to do something um, interesting, more interesting for them, for the kids to learn, you're very welcome to leave the message in the chat box afterwards or link for uh, some kind of web tools. And yeah, about the computer silence, I'm sorry. There was one more uh, class, of course, finishing one was mathematics, which is <laughs> teaching. So at the end, we she tried to combine all the knowledge that kids gain through two previous classes and put it in use in uh, teaching them about Descartes coordinating, rectangle coordinating, coordinator system. So, uh, uh, about that, there is some points in the slide, what they did step by step. Uh, she also, um, uh, well, how should I say this in English? Sorry, sometimes it's just a block. Uh, after all that talk, but uh, she also pointed them out some links for the movie, historical movie about Deckard's life. If they want, it's like post curriculum, it's something they, they can see at home if they want to see it. Uh, so it's had that also as some kind of task or uh, some bonus information about this class. And yeah, let's just go further, and I will get back to this slide, but first to see the PowerPoint for that class. Um, yeah, we had a little bit talk about how it was on the previous classes, geography, and how did it we find some coordinates by using the latitude and longitudes and coordinating system. And yeah, these are these are the links for the movies. Those movies are on um, Serbian language in Serbian. So I guess you could find probably something similar if you want 
in English or some other languages. Um, and then again, uh, we are combining two things. You know, the first thing is, is about mapping, and the second thing is about uh, learning about coordinating system. How do we uh, mark market? Yeah, with x axis and y axis, and of course numbers at this time. And yeah, here we began the story. You know, on the previous slide, there was just getting a coordinating system from the maps, and now there's a story about the coordinating system, coordinating begin, beginning, beginning. Just a few, few, a few uh, pinpoints for the classroom about quadrants, about uh, how in the quadrants they're uh, uh, using uh, symbols for uh, negative uh, yeah. 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 accusation originate. I think I found the translation in English that they are also using that kind of terms in English, but sometimes it's a little bit hard to find some mathematical terms that we use in Serbia on English. I don't know why, to be honest. Yeah. Here is how to find coordinates, uh, coordinate dot coordinates. Yeah, how to find coordinates for dots in the coordinating system. For some more explanation about it, some more pinpoints how to to read uh, uh, coordinates that were given to them. And yeah, I, I pulled up pulled up some uh, slides from this presentation. Uh, because of, only because of the webinar, uh, because it, the, 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 uh, this presentation was pretty much uh, with the most uh, slides. It had most slides, and I put out four slides or three slides about Descartes and about his life and about his uh, achievements for humankind. So. Uh, you will find that one when we put it on the internet and share it with, for you. you. You will have the whole presentation with also those slides, the historical story about the decade. The first task uh, will get to find, of course, the points by using coordinates. There were some more pin points to help them get used to it. Uh, here again, Second task, yeah, and about, yeah, I forgot to say, Alma just <laughs> reminded me. Uh, there was two parts of this task. The first was to find points by using the, the coordinates. The second one is to see and determine which quadrant or axis uh, they belong. So they had to say which, yeah, to know which quadrant is where and to just say, where they belong, those dots in which quadrant. And uh, yeah, the one thing that is not here in uh, this presentation, this is the, the finishing slide with the task, do it yourself task for the kids, so a little bit of, to work out. It's this, it's the link for the um, online application, online app that uh, we used to interactively show uh, pupils uh, how it works when you change the coordinates, how the dots changes, or dots if we use more than one dot, uh, more than one coordinate, uh, set of coordinates, sorry. And it was fun for them, but it would be more fun if they were in front of the computers doing themselves, doing that themselves. So again, um, suggestion that if you do something similar, of course, try to find a place where they can use, or maybe let them use the mobile phones. I can remember that at a uh, kick of meeting, we had a little bit of debate about leaving children uh, or giving children to use mobile phones on classes and 
will they misuse them or not. But in this case, we had a good experience. They were really uh, using it, especially if you put them in pairs or in groups. Uh, they were just uh, trying to share the knowledge about it and to work together to find it uh, using the mobile phones. They like to use them anyway, so why not giving them a chance to use it for something that is in the classroom? Yeah, also on, in the class, Yelena used uh, little square. I cannot say it in English. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, this is, this was the right spelling in the in the English spelling in the this slide. So. If you want to use it, just write it down. They were a little bit playing with the uh, um, yeah, decoding some messages using this slide. And uh, yeah. they were decoding first Descartes thought with it, which is most famous. And yeah, yeah. and then afterwards they were um, trying to make up some codes and some uh, messages, coded messages for their friends. So they were exchanging uh, coded messages between themselves. So that was also pretty much fun for them. It's like a game. So yeah, I think I said something, yeah. There's, those are pictures about, uh, about uh, decoding and encoding uh, games. They played. This is a worksheet for that, and this is the application that we used uh, for showing them how the dot is moving uh, when the uh, parameters coordinates are changed. So, yeah, this is. I, I have to say now, I'm very, very sorry because I couldn't find pictures of them working uh, at the class of the computer science because they were very spectacular pictures. And we have also a movie about it, but we didn't upload it on the, on the YouTube or on the internet yet. And these are just some pictures from the classes. Uh, Yelena and I, well, not Yelena, Yelena and I, I was just helping them um, to, to do that. And uh, evaluation, because uh, in every class, there was approximately seven teachers uh, attending those classes. Afterwards, after every class, we had a kind of discussion about it, and they also have evaluation paper forms they could uh, uh, use. The evaluation form was made from the uh, standards that teacher, teachers, uh, the standards for teacher that we have, you know, in our um, methodology. So they were evaluating the teacher's work uh, in of, all of those three classes. And we also have an evaluation for the pupils. You can see here, it's like um, hmm, three, evaluating three with all those little people doing something, nothing, falling or laughing or being on the top of the tree or something like that. And they had to, Every every color uh, is for a different subject they had, so they just show us through this uh, evaluation uh, sheet about how what they think about every of those three classes, and we are very close to expiring the the time expires very very soon, so this is something that we conclude about those classes. People were delighted with the classes. They were so delighted that after those three classes, much more much more uh, pupils were uh, starting attending and coming to the after classes uh, activities that Yelena was holding. It's like, uh, we call it a, a section for mathematics, but I don't know how to translate it in English. Yeah, it's something that they have opportunity to do uh, out of the curriculum itself with Yelena to teach something more, to wider their uh, knowledge about mathematics. Uh, 
And what we conclude also, unfortunately, is that teachers in our schools, in our school system, in our in our school particularly here, reflect an educational system in Serbia, of course. So we definitely conclude that teachers need more empowerment in the field of informatics, I mean, computer science and uh, thematic planning. So we think this is just the beginning of something that we should do more if we want to change the national curriculum or the traditional way of thinking and teaching. And hopefully our time, yeah, our time just ran out. Uh, I would really like to encourage you to share now with us anything that you have. It could be a question, it could be uh, some link to some uh, web tools if you know some useful web tools. It would be, you can, I don't know, some opinions that you have on what you saw. So uh, please join now for the discussion. Thank you. Thank you all for having patience to listen to us about this. Okay, that's it. Yela? Hi, yeah. So thank you very much, Milena Yelena, for the interesting presentation. Um, as Milena said, we now we have some time for questions or suggestions from the participants. And we had already some comments in the chat uh, during the presentation and, and also a couple of questions that I can launch in the meantime. If uh, anyone else has other questions, please share them in the chat. So Milena Yelena will answer uh, after that. Um, so someone was asking um, if you could uh, tell us which grades these activities were designed for. A little bit more about that. Uh, could you please, yeah, uh, could you please uh, uh, repeat what you said because I didn't hear that. Uh, yes, of course. Um, yeah. There was a question about uh, which grades uh, these activities uh -huh. were designed for. The grades. The grades, uh, these activities. Okay. Uh, if we, uh, Yelena said <laughs> she didn't understand the question, but I will try to anticipate the, the questions that you gave us here. Uh, it was the seventh grade, okay. and, you know, 13 year old, uh, if, if you were thinking about that one. And uh, yeah, this is something that, that they are, uh, most of these, um, um, it's 30 years old, yeah. Did you ask something like that? Yeah, which yeah, yeah, yeah. the question oh, about grade children, I, uh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think it was uh, in the, which was the age range or the class uh, level, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, 13 years old kids, it's a seventh grade with us, the primary school goes to the eighth grade afterwards, it goes to uh, secondary school, uh, uh, high school, yeah, secondary school. And yeah, there was also some comment about uh, the, the use of mobile phones uh, by pupils uh, for class activities yeah. and um, some comments about uh, the important to use them safely into the for, in class. I don't know if you have some suggestion yeah. or if you have uh, some experience yeah. with the using the mobile phones. Yes. Well, as we had a discussion about it when we when we went to the kickoff meeting, I mean, when we, we were on kickoff meeting, it's really about approaching them in the right manners from the beginning, from the first grade even, you know, about that, about that um, topic. But if you don't have that luxury that they were, you know, put uh, with uh, very clear uh, rules and boundaries about using a mobile phone on classes, and you have to do it for the first time, you know, in the class where nobody else is using mobile phone or did use mobile phone before, it's a little bit harder. But uh, we think that because we did it the first time in uh, in our school, I think we are the first that yes. we did something yes. like that in our school. Uh, kids were very much ha they, they were happy that they have a chance to to use it for it, and they didn't misuse it this time. That is not something that I can guarantee they will not misuse it the next time if we do the same thing with the same group of kids. Because afterwards they may, um, you know, just loosen up and uh, try to get, you know, to use it for something else. 
And uh, about safety, uh, if you think about safety uh, as uh, as in uh, will they misuse it or use it for right cause as of the class, or think about safety in uh, if they go online or something like that, will they I don't know get some you know malicious uh, files or something like that. But in both cases. It pretty much, I think, depends on the of the approach of a teacher to those kids and uh, give them a right amount of time to to finish their uh, their tasks. Because if they don't use the mobile phones for solving the task they have or using it to to work on some uh, some other things, getting the information, and they finish the finish uh, a lab test. Then, uh, sorry for the barking. That's the dog. <laughs> then, uh, then I guess uh, you will see they didn't finish the task. Probably not because they don't lack the you know, skills on it. Especially if they work with in a group, because at least one people from the group will know and have those skills. And it's pretty much uh, it's it's more even. <laughs> It's pretty much <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's probably that more of them will know about that, about how to use some uh, web tools and how to use the, uh, the the mobile phone to search information. So if you finish, you know, with uh, groups that don't didn't gain any information or didn't finish the task that you were gave to them, it just Probably will have to say to them, okay, this was the <laughs> test trial. This was the test trial, and now the next time I don't have, you know, um, I don't have uh, I, the trust in you to give you this kind of luxury to use your mobile phone. You just have to work it out, you know, with them probably to to to, to see how they will react and to work it out uh, the trust issue with using or misusing the mobile phones. I think that we, we, we really misjudge them sometimes in this case. That's, well, that's my opinion, of course, and Yelena's, I think, also. Yes. But maybe somebody else had different experience with this. Uh, there were some more comments uh, in, the, in the chat about mobile phones. Mm -hmm. For example, okay. that someone thought there's a great uh, way to compensate for the deficiency of computer, mm -hmm. anyway, and also a great tool. And, and again, some comments about the, the constant use and the trust and mm -hmm. the fact that, of course, uh, you can educate uh, also mm -hmm. pupils about that, about how to use the tools. And mm -hmm. uh, if anyone else has some more questions, please post them in the chat. Um, in the meantime, like, while we're waiting yeah. for more questions in the chat, that it takes a moment to write, um, um, I have a question of my own. I was uh, thinking if you can share with us uh, some idea about um, something you commented at the beginning. Um, and what do you think can be done to support teachers in this initial planning phase for this kind of cross-curricular activities? You mentioned some um, mm -hmm. critical aspects that you already found out. Uh, if you think about uh, how it is hard to find, uh, uh, to, to, to make a cooperation with the teachers to do something like this, uh, well, we were just talking about it before we started this webinar because, of course, we plan to do those classes again. But this time we want to somehow engage more, uh, more those other teachers in, uh, in those classes uh, in, in a way of giving them some more space and, uh, I guess, uh, giving them an opportunity to express their uh, their ideas more or insist on their ideas more because we can also um, now after the first time of after the, the, the first time we held those classes we can uh, call upon the upon the uh, evaluation because we have also the uh, evaluation uh, report and uh, on that call on them for their ideas to empower them to, to be stronger in that and give themselves and ideas about it to put them in the same room. For example, science uh, 
a science teacher with a geographic a teacher of geographic and to give them both the chance to work it out together on a solution how to to manage to to find it before that it was very hard to put them in the same room to be honest it was more like uh, chasing them you know one at a time you know and asking for their you know for support or help or opinion or a uh, way to do it together so it, it it is really a little bit hard now to it was a little bit harder before but uh, we are optimists and <laughs> we will try now to to somehow motivate them more to get into this and especially before because some of them already had uh, an experience to this class and hopefully i guess yeah. we will have more more teachers in uh, doing this idea okay i i guess i okay. hope Thank i you. answered the Thank question you very much. Uh, um, welcome yeah uh there are still some comments about the use of mobile phones for the so you know like um, pros and cons that it's uh, I think the, the the answer you provide on the view and the experience you had is already including many of these um, aspects and yeah if there are any other questions uh, from the participants. Mm. Or if you want to maybe share with us with some final remarks or suggestions. Well, I don't know. Yelna and I, we, we were very much enthusiastic about some changes in schools in general. And yeah, I see the comment about the suspected teachers because of the social status and everything else. And yeah, I can agree with that because most of them are talking about it very often in Serbia. But yet, uh, Maybe this will sound a little bit corny, but we have, you know, that kind of attitude that uh, what is the best for the children at that point? I mean, for us, it's an experience. It's working on our skills, you know, sharing an experience with each other, learning from each other. I have to say, Yelena improved her um, science, uh, computer science skills very much in the past uh, year. So uh, it is more than a social status for us, and I think that with the right motivation, other other colleagues will and would join the the, the this kind of um, I don't know work opportunity to work on this kind of interesting classes. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much for for sharing uh, your experience in uh, such. Uh, interesting way and uh, provide yeah, us with yeah. all these materials as well yeah. and all the and so on. Uh, I already yeah. shared. I forgot something, sorry, because I, I, uh, pr I promised people that I will uh, leave behind the link for the materials on English and in Serbian. Yeah, but we I just have to see. We share already in the chat. Everyone. Yeah. yeah, you shared already. Yeah, yeah, okay. we shared in the chat. So we say we wrote that um, the. Um, all the materials and and so on you presented us will so be there and um, you have to say thank you for every thank you everybody for uh, for comments that you made and for the links that somebody left uh, aside I mean left on the chat and thank you for thanking us and <laughs> saying it was a good work this is our first webinar so yeah. we really were excited about this. And I think uh, we can yeah, agree that it was a very, very good experience. <laughs> okay, so thanks thank to you. you. And um, if, if you have any final remark, or, or I think we can wrap up the session. Yeah, we can. Okay, so I would like to thank you all for participating on behalf of the European School Net, Scientix, and from me and my colleagues here, Adina and Victor. And of course, thanks to you, Milena and Elena, for this talk and the material and for the experience you share with us. Uh, I hope to see everyone online again in one of the upcoming webinars of the Scientific Series. Um, we have 
uh, two talks uh, we are planning, uh, the one in the last week of September and the following one mid-October, and all the information will be available soon on the site portal um, that you can see the link on the chat. And um, so thanks you all, and thanks again, and see you next time. Fair. 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 <laughs> Bye. Bye.